Now we are going to start a press conference by Prime Minister Kishida. We will have opening remarks from the Prime Minister. The Prime Minister, over to you. Thank you. Today, we had a cabinet approval on a strategic policy for children's future. I'd like to talk about the key points of that and the content of the support measures that we are going to deliver for the people of Japan. Declining birth rate is an issue that impacts the whole social and economy uh, of Japan. And it is an imminent challenge that we cannot procrastinate. And I've been working on this with a strong resolve. The birth number in 2022 was the lowest in history, 770,000 people around 50 years old, or the second baby boomers, compared with that, it is less than 40%. The rapid declining birth rate and the declining population, we need to put brakes on that. Otherwise, our economy and the society will shrink. The local communities, the pension, medical systems, and nursery systems, those social security systems cannot be maintained. The young population is going to be rapidly declining up until 2030s. It is our last chance to overturn the declining trend. There is an increase in a married rate and a decrease in the birth rate. The biggest reason, one of the big reasons behind that is the lower low income of the young generation. We need to increase the income of the young and the child rearing generation so that people from the younger generation, anyone who wants who has the, the hope to get married and have and the rare children uh, that their wish can be realized and that we need to create a society for them to have bright hope for the future. Otherwise we cannot turn around the declining trend of birth rate. And we have to change the structure and the, the consciousness of the society as a whole. And we need to change the reality where the child rearing burden is focused on women and families and working places. Um, companies have to support those child rearing households. And we need to create a society to support child rearing households as uh, the local community as a whole. So in order to tackle Japan's declining birth rate and taking measures, there are three important uh, points in deciding this strategic policy. The first key point is to show and implement a big package with the realization of economic growth and anti declining birth rate as the two wheels of the vehicle. So under the idea of the new forms of uh, capitalism, for the first time in 30 years, we have realized that the highest level of wage hike and the corporate corporates uh, have a willing, a highly willing to make investment. For the past 30 years, we've seen deflational economy and the cost cut economy, this vicious cycle is going to be cut off and we have started to take actions and we need to secure and make this trend more steady through continuous and the structural wage hike and investment on people and to accelerate the increase of private sector investment to realize a stable economic growth. We need to take actions in a speedy manner. And also we need to strengthen the measures to decline, to uh, tackle declining birth rate. So the first pillar is uh, to enrich the financial support. We will largely expand the child allowances and reduce the burden of higher education and apply insurance for birth cost, and we will review the seeding of the 1.1 uh, million and 60,000 yen and the 1.3 million seeding. Uh, and these are the problems that we have not been able to solve over the 
uh, long term, and we are going to boldly expand those economic support. So through realizing economic growth and strengthening our measures against the declining birth rate through those two wheels, we are going to increase the income of the younger generation and the child rearing generation. We, we are going to cover all the bases to do so. In securing financial sources, we shouldn't inhibit economic growth and reduce the income of the young and the child rearing generations. In other words, we cannot put accelerators and the brakes at the same time. So we are going to thoroughly implement expenditure reform first to secure financial sources. On the foreign point of view, to construct social security systems for all generations, we are going to thoroughly implement expenditure reform. At the same time, we will utilize the existing budget to the maximum. We will grow the economy. We will increase the income of the people. We are going to make the economic foundation and the financial foundations solid. And through economic, through expenditure uh, reform, we will reduce the public expenditure and we will also reduce the burden of the social insurance, the social security system. And through the effect of that, we are not going to increase the burden on our people in constructing a new framework for financial support in order to tackle declining birth rate. Now let me turn to the second point. Until 2030s, it's going to be our last chance, so we need to secure the scale. The scale of the acceleration plan is going to be about 3.5 trillion yen. With that budget, the children and child rearing budget in terms of family-related expenditure per child will reach the level of Sweden, which is the top of OECD countries. So it's going to be a groundbreaking progress. And with this plan, the budget for children and family agency is going to increase by more than 50 percent. So doubling the child budget is going to become a reality. We will also review the, the benefits, uh, the efficacy of the acceleration plan, and we will further study. And up until the beginning of the 2030s, we are going to aim for doubling the budget for children and the family agency. The third key point is that also based on the idea that 2030s is our last chance, we put premiums on the sense of speed. As I have already mentioned, we are going to implement expenditure reform across multiple years to secure financial sources. At the same time, we cannot be late at the critical juncture of 2030. So the core of the acceleration plan are going to, is going to be implemented over the next three years. So we will increase the lump sum allowance for childbirth and the escort runner type support for zero to two year old. We'll start with this fiscal year and child allowance and also working on the system uh, for every child to go to preschool. Uh, these necessary measures will start for next fiscal year with a sense of speed. And also from the same point of view, in March, Minister Ogura put together a draft. We didn't include the expansion of support for higher education in that draft. This is going to be the second round. So poverty, addressing poverty, uh, abuse prevention, and also support for a child with disability and the child in medical care. Under my instruction, we decided to implement those measures ahead of the schedule. And while we are going to implement those support measures with a sense of speed, considering that it's going to take several years to complete the expenditure reform, there is going to be some lacking uh, shortage in the financial sources. And for that situation, we are going to utilize deficit financing bound under special legislation. Next, let me talk about the specific details 
of what we are going to strengthen in terms of the support for our public. So we have held the four rounds of a children's policy dialogues and the six rounds of children's future strategy council meetings. We talked to people who are rearing children, people who are single, and the people who used to rear children, but they graduated. And we also talked to the experts, the various experts and the people working uh, on site, and we listened to their opinions. There were three basic philosophies in the acceleration plan. Number one, increase the income of the young generation. Second, to change the structure and the consciousness of the whole society. Number three, provide a seamless support according to the life stage of all children and the child rearing households. These are going to be the three pillars for us to strengthen our measures, our policies thoroughly. So on the first pillar, increasing the income of the young generation. So we are going to implement the structural wage hike and the labor market reform as a bundle. And then we are going to put focus on financial support in our measures to tackle declining birth rate. We are going to thoroughly enhance that. For the child allowance, uh, we will remove the income threshold. We will extend the period of support payment by three years up till the graduation of high school. And for children who have more than three kids, the support, financial support will be doubled to 30,000. And this is going to start in next October. And for families with three children, until they graduate the high school, the total amount of the child allowance will be 11 million yen, up about 4 million yen at most. In terms of higher education, when children go to the university, we are going to expand the, the households uh, who are going to be eligible for the support uh, to, multiple, to families with multiple children with 6 million yen of annual income at most uh, to enjoy reduction of tuition. And under my instruction, we will also implement uh, this as part of the acceleration plan. And also, we will consider the economic burden of families uh, when they're rearing children. So we will lower the student loan payment and also to thoroughly expand the deferred tuition plans. As for the childbirth expense, uh, from this fiscal year, the childbirth one-time lump sum payment is increased from 420,000 yen to 500,000 yen from this fiscal year. Uh, it will be made visual, visible so that uh, people can choose various services. And as a second step, step from FI 2026, the, uh, the childbirth expenses will be covered by insurance. We will be supporting income increase for working uh, families. Uh, the uh, restrictions by the barrier of 1.06 million yen and 1.3 million yen has been pointed out for long years in order to support the household with uh, both parents working, even when uh, the income in exceeds 1.06 million, the uh, income will not be reversed, so that will be providing necessary uh, support, such a package to enhanced support package will be decided and implemented within this fiscal year. And also for the part-time workers who are working less than 20 hours a week, the, uh, the eligibility for employee insurance will be extended to these people so that they can receive the child rearing uh, allowance and also the uh, self-employed persons, freelance workers who are rearing children will be exempted from pay meant of a premium for national pension. People point out the issue of housing. Housing priority with priority for child rearing families will be provided a total of 300,000 units in the next 10 years. 
and also the preferred interest rate for the flat 35 will be introduced depending on the number of children per family. And at an early uh, timing uh, by FI 2024, we'll be introducing this system as well. Second fundamental principle, changing both the structure and consciousness of the society. I would like to explain to you the specific concrete measures. As has, I have been pointing out, there are a number of factors uh, for the declining population and birth rate, uh, which is rooted to the social structure and people's consciousness in Japan. Of course, we need to enhance individual policies, but in order to make uh, best use of the policies, it is indispensable to change the society itself. In the companies also, we need to fundamentally change the culture and atmosphere of the workplace so that uh, uh, men and women are able to take child care leave without any reservation at all. There's no time to spare so that uh, the workplace can change dramatically. We have raised dramatically the government's target for taking child care leave so that by 2030, 85% of the eligible men uh, should take child care leave. And uh, child care leave is uh, taken as a matter of course. The initiative of companies should be made visible through Securities Report and others. We pay sufficient at attention to the burden of the SMEs and provide support uh, to, uh, for a support alliance to workers who shouldered extra responsibilities for the people who are taking leaves. And the companies who are doing more will be receiving more support, will be giving priority so that the companies are encouraged to take these initiatives. In tandem with the change of the workplace culture, we'll dramatically enhance child care leave system. Reflecting the voices of the users, we will reconcile child care leave and career development and build up the system with high degree of freedom that accommodates a wide variety of work styles. To be more specific, we will prepare an environment where diverse work style can be chosen, such as shorter working hours and teleworking, so that uh, people have more time to spend with their children. And at the same time, not only when uh, you take complete uh, leave during the child rearing uh, period, but even when you receive work with shorter hours, you can receive benefits. Also, we we'll raise the benefit rate to 100% of take-home pay when child care leave is taken by both men and women during a certain period right after childbirth. By doing so, the parents will raise their children and share the housework as a couple and reduce impact on their career development and also on income. By taking these enhanced measures, budget related to child care leave benefit will double The support measures are world's top level. I do hope that uh, uh, the, uh, there will be a construction of workplace where people find it easy to take child care leave and uh, promote work style reform so that the parents can have more time to spend with their children. As I said in the press conference in March, Japanese society is said to be not necessarily kind to families who raise children. We need to change the consciousness of the society, and we should uh, uh, build together with you a society where uh, people can support the child-rearing families. And as a, uh, for that, uh, we will be establishing special lanes in the national facilities, such as Shinjuku Gyoen Park and Science Museum. And also, free space is to be provided for public transportation, uh, transportation for users of uh, baby carts. So we will be expanding reform of the awareness and consciousness so that we can create a society which is kind to children and child-rearing families 
So in this way, we'll be changing the consciousness and the structure of the workplace and society. We will be uh, making this into a national movement. Lastly, the third fundamental principle, that is comprehensive institutional structure that supports all families raising ch children seamlessly, depending upon the lifestyle stage. We have been preparing child care facilities, making early childhood education and child care effectively free, and we have been enhancing and strengthening child and child rearing policies. However, the policies that need to be taken in the next 10 years will become more diverse and will be changing as well. Irrespective of the style of work of the parents, Whatever situation the family might be, without any discrimination, we need to provide similar support depending upon the life stage of the families. From this perspective, we will strengthen support during pregnancy and uh, uh, the f from birth up to age two, where the support has not been very abundant until now. For the families who are raising children at this point, in addition to 100,000 yen of financial support, we will be enhancing escort runner type support to respond to various uh, problems that they might be faced with. Also, we change the concept of the uh, preschool, uh, irrespective of whether the parents are working or not, we will be uh, making uh, a system of anyone can go to preschool system where people can use this service flexibly by hours. The case of uh, Matsudo City's hot room, Yabashira, uh, which is a pioneer. I have visited this uh, facility the other day. And there are voices that we hear. This became a trigger for the connection between the uh, fathers at a time of difficulty right after birth, support of the staff was very helpful. Such voices were heard. We'd like to make this, uh, deploy this on a national scale. And from next fiscal year, we will be starting this uh, uh, initiative of institutionalizing this. With regards to ch child care facilities, thanks to the long years of effort to expand child care infrastructure, we were able to see certain results in reducing or eliminating children on waiting list. From now, we will be changing the focus of the policy from uh, the quantitative expansion to qualitative improvement. And for the first time in 75 years, we have changed the criteria for allocation of the uh, nursery school teachers. And the uh, children, one-year children that one uh, nursery teacher is in charge of is reduced from six to five. And also, we are improving the compensation for the uh, nursery school parents. And also for the area where the strength and support is needed, such as children with poverty and the prevention of abuse, children with disability, and children who need medical care, we need to have the tailored support to meet diverse support. In the process of formulating guidelines for children's policy, we make this uh, more specific, and we have I have given instruction so that we can uh, front load the support measures through this for all the children and child rearing uh, families. Uh, we will be preparing comprehensive institutional structure that supports all families raising children seamlessly, depending on the parents' work style, lifestyle, and age of children. So far, I have explained to you the key points of our measures against uh, declining population, uh, declining uh, birth rate, and support measures. Going forward, we will make more concrete the policy for children's future strategy and formulate a strategy, and we'll be submitting necessary bills for institutional reform. In relation to that, there are some media report about the financial resources saying that the decision is postponed to the end of the year. 
in securing the financial resources by expenditure reform and others, the content of the uh, expenditure reform will be made concrete through the budgetary formulation of each year. But uh, from the perspective of uh, building a social security system for all generations, which was decided in the policy for children's future strategy, will be thoroughly conducting expenditure reform. So that uh, we aim to make sure that uh, there will be no additional burden substantially, and this policy remains unchanged. Therefore, uh, the accusation that it was a postponement is not an appropriate point. Now, the period up until 2030 is the last chance for us. With a firm determination, with the economic growth and measures against declining birth rate as the two wheels of a vehicle, with a sense of speed, we will be implementing these measures. And I seek your kind understanding and cooperation. Thank you. Now we will take questions from the press. If you have questions, please raise your hand. And go to the nearest stand mic. And please state your name and affiliations when you are called. And then one question per person. We will start with the coordinators. Okay, I'm a Franica newspaper. Thank you. So, in the strategic policy for children's future, you said that you are going to particularly focus on increasing the income of the young and the child rearing generations. And you talked about realizing the economic growth and the measures to tackle declining birth rate as the two wheels of a car. But over the past 30 years, the real wage hasn't increased in the 2030s. Up until then, it is the last chance to tackle the declining birth rate. To what extent are you going to raise the salaries? What is your goal? And what is the, the roadmap for that? On financial resources, you said that you are going to strike to not to increase additional burden on people while setting up a new support system. But already, because of the aging society, the insurance payment is going up. So are you, do you mean that you are going to keep the insurance payment low, or are you going to keep that within the range of the uh, increase in uh, aging rate? Could you specify that? So you asked about the goal for wage hike. So the figures, the specific numbers, uh, should be decided based on the negotiations between employees and the, labors, the labor unions. And recently, in the spring wage hike movement, 3.6% was achieved. And for SMEs, 3.36% was achieved, which is the first time of a wage hike in um, over 30 years. And also, The companies, they have a very strong um, momentum towards investment domestically, uh, realizing 3.60% of wage hike overall. And then our administration is going to make this trend a steadier one to realize investment and the wage hike in a sustainable and a structural way, and also to accelerate the private investment to realize a stable economic growth. For a minimum wage for this year, we are going to achieve to achieve the uh, national weighted average of 1,000 yen. And we would like the uh, tripartisan employees, labor unions, and the government to uh, have thorough discussions on the Council of Minimum Wage. And after this summer, we are also going to discuss our policy after we achieve the minimum wage of 1,000 yen for securing the financial resources to tackle declining birth rate. That's another of your question. And already, the financial sources for those measures, we will secure those 
through expenditure reforms to reduce public expenditure and to reduce the social security burden of the people. And by utilizing the benefits from that, we are not going to ask for additional burden on the people in tackling declining birth rate. As you said, because of the aging society, medical and nursing services insurance payment are going up, the rate is going up. But as we tackle the declining birth rate, we shouldn't inhibit economic growth, and we shouldn't decrease the income of the young and the child rearing just generations. So we are going to thoroughly implement expenditure reform to reduce public costs and also to um, prevent the insurance payment from going up. We are going to construct our financial support with that in mind, so we are not going to increase the burden on the people while we secure the financial sources. Shinohara from TV Tokyo. Related to the policy uh, promotion uh, capabilities about the resolution uh, by ruling parties and opposition policies, there are views that uh, Prime Minister Kishida will be resolving the House of Representatives during this uh, session. Uh, the Mr. Uh, Oguda uh, and Mr. Oboriyama saying that if the opposition comes with a non-confidence vote, this may be the cause of resolution. Do you think that the resolution, the uh, non-confidence vote by the ruling opposition party with the cause of the resolution, and do you have any intention of dissolving the lower house in this current session of the Diet? First, Kishida administration uh, on both sides, domestic policy and the foreign policy, uh, they postponed the difficult challenges which have been uh, uh, pending, and for each one of them, we need to find uh, answers. That is our mission. With that, uh, we are running the government. As to your question about the resolution and general election, in view of this situation, what would be, when would be the most appropriate time? Uh, we will be making a comprehensive judgment looking at the circumstances. That is my thinking. Now, this fundamental policy, and uh, based upon that, uh, judgment will be made. In the current uh, uh, ordinary session of the Diet, uh, toward the end of the session, I, uh, it can be expected that there might be various movements, so I'd like to discern how things will move. Now, at this point in time, therefore, I would like to refrain from saying anything further than that. So do you believe that the no confident motion is going to be a cause for the dissolution? I will not uh, make comments on that question at the moment. Now we are going to take questions from other media outlets. Please raise your hand if you want to ask a question. All right. Fuji TV. This is uh, Fuji TV about my number card. So my number card, health insurance card, other people's um, information was mistakenly linked. And there are anxieties and concerns spreading among the public. How are you going to tackle that? On my number card, it is going to play the role as a passport for each individual public in order to transform our country into a 21st century digital society. We want to gain understanding from the people on the, on the intention of my number card, and we are getting support from the people for the penetration of my number card. As a result, over the past one year, we have rapidly increased the penetration rate, the penetration of that from 57 million cards to 92 million cards. First of all, I want to extend my appreciation to the support from our people. As you pointed out, with the rapid spread of my number card, there are um, mistakes 
happened around my number card, for example, with the health insurance card, 7,372 cases. On page pension information, one case. And at the application stage, the registration of pension acceptance bank account using families' names of the for the children or the elderly, there were 130,000 cases, and these have been surfaced. We need to protect personal information and also to secure the trust from the people. This is the prerequisite for the spread of my number card. So we take this very seriously, and there are three basic policies. The first one is that we are going to conduct a total inspection of the relevant data and systems about the system failure that caused the wrong issuance of other people's certificate at the convenience stores that revamp is going to complete by the end of this week. Uh, relevant data last week, under my instruction, the digital minister, Mr. Kono, uh, had been leading the total inspection, pulling all the stops, and we are going to put together a system to swiftly put together the information about those uh, wrong cases and all the data total inspection is going to be done until this autumn. The second uh, basic policy is to create a system to prevent recurrence because some are manual and we shouldn't allow any input mistakes. So we are going to thorough, thoroughly implement automation and also to create a system to have multi, multiple uh, checks uh, depending on the situation on site and barring the revamp of the system. And this is going to be uh, complete, uh, conducted by this autumn. Number three is to carefully respond to remove the concerns of the people. For example, about the health insurance card, uh, people have concerns uh, because this is going to be abolished in next autumn, and that's been pointed out. And for the already issued health insurance card, after next autumn, after the abolishment, we will set one year of transition period for their insurance card to be valid so that their card can be utilized until the autumn uh, in the year after next year. We will explain that carefully so that the people can have the medical uh, services with a peace of mind. And we aim for a smooth transition. Tamurasan, please. Thank you, Tamura. About the uh, abduction issue by North Korea, Prime Minister, uh, for realizing the uh, leaders' meeting, you would like to have uh, the high-level meeting under you. Specifically, how are you going to implement this? Also, the family uh, society said that uh, uh, if uh, all the abductees can be returned uh, to Japan immediately, then they do not oppose to providing the government, uh, providing humanitarian support to North Korea. How do you take this, and how is the government going to respond to this? Thank you. First, in March this year, the uh, new movement policy of families and uh, uh, the Rescue Meet People's Association was received today from 2002. No abductee has been returned to Japan. This is indeed regrettable, and the government takes this very seriously. As for Japan's response to North Korea, on 27th last month, the National uh, Assembly National Meeting was held, and I have expressed my views on this. That is, 
based upon Pyongyang Declaration of Japan and North Korea, uh, we are to comprehensively resolve pending issues such as abduction, nuclear, and missile, and uh, resolve unfortunate past and try to realize normalization of the diplomatic relations between the two countries, especially as the uh, family members of the abductees are getting older and there's a uh, time constraint, and there's this is an important humanitarian issue that cannot be uh, th that is urgent will continue to uh, work hard so that uh, all the abductees will be able to return to Japan as soon as possible. Now, uh, we need to resolve the pending issues between the two countries, and the uh, two countries together uh, try to create a new time. From that perspective, I uh, I take every possible opportunity to express my determination to Chairman Kim Jong-un and in order to realize uh, the summit meeting, I would like to have the high-level meeting which reports directly to me. Thank you. Next to Shimizu-san. Shimizu for NHK. Thank you. On the same note. So related to your remark, uh, it seems like uh, North Korea uh, had announced a statement echoing your remarks. And do you take this as a positive sign towards the future? And are you going to set a time limit for that, like realizing the summit by the end of the year? Secretary of State Blinken of the US, U.S. is reported to visit China very soon, and uh, uh, we assume that we will see some dialogues between the U.S. and the China. And in, for Japan, uh, Minister Hayashi visited China in April, so are you going to visit China at some point? What is your view? On Japan-North Korea relations first, I'm aware of the report that you mentioned. But as I've repeatedly said, the importance of dialogues is something we would like to emphasize, and we are going to urge North Korea, what, that's what we've been doing, and we will further do so. In terms of, uh, of our response against North Korea, last, the 27th of last month, I also talked about my thoughts at the National Assembly meeting, and I've already stated that in my previous answer. And you asked me if I'm going to set a time limit. I'm not going to uh, speculate that. But based on the declaration of the Japan, North Korea, uh, Pyongyang declaration, we need to comprehensively resolve various pending issues, including the abduction issue and the nuclear missile development issues. And we need to put an end to the unfortunate past to realize the normalization of the ties between the two countries. So we need to realize the summit meeting with Chair Kim Jong-un at an early stage. That's what I believe. You also asked a question about Japan-China relations. So about my visit to China, there is nothing concrete decided with China. We will claim what we sh must claim, and we will ask them. We will ask China to take responsible actions, and we will also have dialogues on various pending issues and cooperate on common challenges. That's the kind of constructive and stable Japan-China relations that we want to achieve with the efforts by both countries. And that's what I have been emphasizing. And this is our basic stance. This is going to continue to be our stance. And on various levels, we are going to have close communications with China. That will be our stance towards Japan-China relations. Yamamoto-san, please. Yamamoto from Bunka Hoso. About uh, the measures against declining birth date, I have a question. In order to whether or not uh, improving uh, the fertility rate is uh, the birth rate is extremely important. The uh, budget, which is uh, in the mid three trillion yen level, with this uh, 
budget. How much benefit do you expect? And uh, the improving uh, birth rate. How much improvement is expected? If you have any target, specific number, please share that with me, please. Thank you for your question. Birth rate. How much effect is expected? What's your question? In the past, in the LDP Komeito coalition government, uh, based upon the needs of each time, we have uh, been taking various policies, for example, the preparing the uh, nursery preschool facilities and uh, providing free of charge uh, child education and child rearing, and depending upon the life stage. As a result, the budget for measures against declining population has significantly and increased. For instance, the number of uh, people on the waiting list for nursery school uh, has uh, increased, decreased from 26,000 in 2017 to 3,000 uh, persons last year. Certain results have been ob ob observed. However, there's no stop in the declining uh, children and the declining population. In the background, uh, various factors such as which prevent uh, the marriage and childbirth and uh, hope for rearing children. And as the social economic situation changes significantly, the content of the child rearing policies that need to be taken are changing as well. Therefore, in view of the current situation, effective measures against the declining policy birth rate is needed. Under Minister Ogura, draft proposal is to be prepared in that process. A discussion is taking place. And also in the Council for Children's Future Strategy, we had a series of discussions. I myself had various children policy dialogue in different places and listened to various opinions from the people who are engaged in child rearing. So at this point in time, in this society, the policies that are needed, once again, we identified the issues, and based upon that, this time, we came up with the policy for children's future strategy and three fundamental philosophies. That is, first, uh, the enhanced uh, financial support together with structural wage increase to increase young generations' income. Secondly, to change the structure and consciousness of the society as a whole. And thirdly, to provide seamless uh, support to all the children and child rearing uh, families at uh, different life stages. These are the three pillars, and we strengthen fundamentally the policies. We made clear that we'll be strengthening these measures. So the policies that are needed now are added up. As a result, the size of the acceleration, acceleration plan it became in the mid-3 trillion yen level. With regards to this budget, as I mentioned in my remarks, our child and child rearing budget per capita uh, family expense, then we are on par with the level of Sweden, which is a top amongst the OECD countries. So the, the, we be, I believe that there will be a significant progress in our measures against a declining birth rate. We will be verifying the effect of the acceleration plan and further examine the content and budget of the policy. And by the early 2030s, in terms of the budget of the Children and uh, Family uh, Agency will be doubling the budget by uh, 2030. It's the last chance for us, and we'll be making progress with our children's future strategy, and we'll be reversing the trend of declining birth rate. Next, Mr. Yamaguchi from AP. This is an Yamaguchi from AP. Today, at the plenary session of the lower house, the LG, 
LGBT. The bill so to promote LGBT understanding was passed. I want to ask a question about that. So right before the deliberation, there was a revised bill to prepare us to prepare that for all people to have a peace of mind or for communities and families in order to gain support from communities and families. That kind of phrases have been incorporated and also in a questions at the diet, uh, there is a need a call for and uh, explained uh, towards uh, people who need support. And also, the victims are asking for the prohibition of discrimination. So, so far, the local governments and the private sector There are voices to that saying that the government is not standing by the voices of the victims and actually doing the opposite. So how, how do you see that? How do you answer that? And uh, also over the same-sex marriage suits out of six uh, cases, there were cases that are ruled to be unconstitutional about the legislation of same-sex marriage. Could you also elaborate your thoughts on that? On your first question relating to the bills to promote LGBT understanding, on the 9th, on Friday, at the Budget Committee of the Lower House, the revised ruling party's plan um, was uh, passed with the uh, uh, support uh, by the five uh, uh, parties in majority, including DPFP and others. And the, the bills uh, itself is a, a lawmaker-sponsored bill. Uh, you said the bill has been passed, but actually the deliberation is ongoing in the lower house. And actually, the bill is still being deliberated. So from the position of the government, I want to refrain from evaluating that or commenting on that. And continuously at the diet, the discussions, the deliberations are ongoing, and we hope to gain a majority of agreement or support on the bills. The government believes that the diversity should be respected and everyone's human rights and the dignity uh, should be respected and that people uh, can have a lively uh, life in the society. We are going to listen to the voices of our people and we take their voices seriously. And in related to your question about same-sex lawsuits, so on same-sex marriage, there were various opinions. So we need to get a wide range of understanding from the people by deepening discussions. And I believe that posture is very important about the systems we expect to deepen the discussions among the people, and based on people's voices, we also want to deepen the discussions in the political arena. We would like to entertain two more questions. Two questions were asked and related question. Egawa is my name, a free journalist. Earlier, about uh, the birth rate uh, uh, target and the effect uh, specific target was asked, and uh, there was no answer to that question. So I'd like to ask the same question. Also, the person by uh, writer about same-sex marriage was mentioned earlier, Prime Minister. You said that uh, it is important to change the society. And related to that, the law, struck, law is to be uh, put in place. Why is it with the uh, declining uh, birth rate you try to change the society, and uh, yet uh, when it comes to humanitarian issue, human rights issue, same-sex marriage, 
the society will change, you say, and you are hesitant. Why is it? I have a big question on that. Same-sex marriage is uh, uh, allowed, and nobody will be in trouble. As family, the no protection is given at all, and this is the infringement of the human rights, and this is a grave uh, point. And the Supreme Court uh, comes to the saying that this is unconstitutional. Until that happens, you are not going to put into law, or uh, the prime minister will be taking the leadership and will be changing the society. The society has already changed, I should say. If you have the opinion poll, 70 percent of the respondents say that they accept same-sex marriage. So what is called for is a legal system to support this. Uh, what is your view on this, please? Thank you. Right. First, uh, the measures against declining population and the birth rate, the uh, target, was your first question. This time, the child and child rearing policy, as uh, we see declining uh, uh, birth rate, and uh, we would like to reverse this uh, trend. Therefore, we came up with the policies. First, the, 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 the number of children born is now 770,000. It is declining. The childbirth is declining. We need to reverse this trend. And for that, various policies have to be in place. Society and awareness, consciousness has to change as well. Also, as it has to be promoted uh, as a set with economic policy. So the birth rate, uh, the specific number, the numerical target was your question. But uh, we need to reverse the trend of declining uh, birth rate. Therefore, we have prepared these policies. Your second question regarding the same-sex marriage and the uh, court cases. You were saying that I am rather reluctant or negative. But that is not the case at all. I didn't say that I'm negative. But uh, this system, and also legally, uh, create a system then from the wide range of people, Japanese people. There, there will be various impact upon the people. So we have to look at that as well. So a wide range of uh, discussion has to take place, and a wide range of understanding has to be enhanced. That is what I'm saying. So the move based upon the movement of the judiciary in the, amongst the people and in the political arena, how the discussion evolves. I would like to watch carefully and listen to the voices of the people and the government would like to fulfill its responsibility. Thank you. Next, we will take the last question. Okada from Kyoto newspaper. Let me ask a question about regional revitalization. So in the during the Abe administration, the key policy for regional revitalization was the the transfer of the Cultural Affairs Agency to uh, Kyoto. It was completed last month. And 30% of the staff remained in Kasumigaseki, and also there is a, a department to address the, the former unification church issue, and which will also remain in Tokyo, the religion, the religious department. And are you? Do you think that this is going to correct uh, the the intensive focus in Tokyo and the regional revitalization, and also part of the measures to revitalize the uh, regional areas? You have uh, the. Uh, digital Garden City Nation uh, concept. So going forward, are you also going to transfer other ministries or agencies? The Culture Affairs Agency has been transferred by 30 percent of the staff remain in Tokyo, you pointed that out. So about the transfer of Cultural Affairs Agency, there is a transfer council that uh, have the local governments to participate and the prerequisite uh, based on the premise to transfer 70 percent of the total number of employees. So based on that, uh, we utilize the digital technologies and also to also respond to the 
policy issues at the same time and transfer the headquarters to Kyoto. The number of staff, of course, is an important matter, but by transferring the Cultural Affairs Agency from Kyoto, where the historic uh, culture uh, prospered, we expect that new uh, cultural administration or new policies are going to be proceeded in order to contribute to the development of Japan's culture uh, coordination. They also ask whether we are going to transfer other ministries or agencies and uh, by 2023, fiscal year 2023, including the Cultural Affairs Agency, the effect on regional revitalization by transferring government bodies and also to uh, and also the, the um, functions uh, as uh, government bodies. We are going to conduct a comprehensive review of that, and based on the result, we are going to consider future measures. You mentioned the Digital Garden City Nation vision and the transfer of government agencies as one of the important topics. There were also promotion of teleworking, remote working, and the migration to regional areas and an enhanced attractiveness of regional universities and high schools, as well as optical fiber, 5G digital infrastructure. We need to take comprehensive measures to realize a society where people can live comfortably and with convenience anywhere in that country. So uh, that will be the point of view that we have, um, including uh, the including about the transfer of the government agencies. So. Very sorry that uh, this will conclude at the uh, press conference of today. And for people who have further questions, please send the written questions to us, and then we will get back to you. Thank you very much for your cooperation.